Hi, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we're going to be looking at the study guide for Unit 6 to prepare us for the Unit 6 test. There are lots of different problems and different types of problems in the study guide. However, all the problems featured are those that we've already looked at over the past several weeks during our study of Unit 6. I'm going to uh, demonstrate a couple problems from each set of problems on each page, but I'm not going to go over every problem. If you have specific questions about specific problems, please bring them to class when we review uh, the study guide prior to the test. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first set of problems, number one, has us dividing larger numbers, but as you can see, these numbers are just single digit uh, multiplication problems that have an extra 0 or 2 in, uh, in play. So for example, problem A, 420 divided by 6, all we're doing here is just dividing 42 with a 0 behind it. So we know that 6 times 7 is 42, so 6 times 7 tens would give us 42 tens. So to reverse that, I'm just going to use my math fact. 6 times 7 is 42 to help me solve this division problem. Now, when we get into unfamiliar territory, for example, 2a, 84 divided by 7, that might not be one that you know off the top of your head. Well, we were given a couple of strategies to solve division problems this way. One was the partial quotients. Okay, partial quotients has us taking the number 84, which is our dividend, and dividing it with our divisor, that's 7. And we start by thinking to ourselves, how many groups of 7 can I get out of 84? Well, I know that 7 times 10 is 70, so that tells me I can get at least 10 groups of 7 out of 84, because 7 times 10 is 70. Now, if I subtract the difference... 84 minus 70, that leaves me with 14. And again, I ask myself, how many groups of 7 can I get out of 14? Well, I know I can get 2, because 7 times 2 is 14. Subtract the difference, I'm left with 0. And so using the partial quotients method, if I add 10 groups of 7 plus 2 groups of 7, I'm going to be left with 12 groups of 7. So my answer would be... 12 groups of 7. Now I could approach that same problem using the long division method, something that we're going to get a little bit more practice with in a few minutes. So 84 divided by 7. I'm going to set it, approach it the same way. I'm going to ask myself, how many groups of 7 can I get out of 8? But this time I'm going to use the strategy with this uh, acronym. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, check and repeat, dad, mom, sister, brother, cousin, rover. So I'm going to divide 8 by 7 because I know that I can get one group of 7 out of 8 because 7 times 1 is 7. I'm going to subtract the difference. That leaves me with 1. So I bring down the 4. I check to see if my number is bigger than my divisor. It is. So now I'm going to repeat the process. How many groups of 7 can I get out of 14? Well, because we already solved this problem once, we know the answer would be 2 groups because 2 times 7 is 14. I'm going to subtract. There's nothing left and there's nothing to bring down. So I check to make sure my number is smaller than my divisor, 7. It is. So there's nothing left to do. My remainder then is 0. But since it's a remainder of 0, I'm just going to ignore it. And once again, my answer is 12. Okay? Now, problem number 3 is a, uh, a story problem, which requires us to think about what we're being asked to do. Well, spoiler alert, since most of the problems we've been doing have been involving division, it's probably a division problem. So let's look at it. There are 39 granola bars in a box. Michelle and her three friends decide or decided to share them equally. How many granola bars will each girl get? Now, if we use the ruckus strategy, 
read multiple times, underline the question, circle important parts, come up with an action plan, and solve, that asks us to go back and read this again, and that's going to be important here in just a second. There are 39 granola bars in a box. Michelle and her three friends, I'm going to highlight and set a circle here, decided to share them equally. How many granola bars will each girl get? So if I underline that problem, I know I'm going to be dividing 39 by the number of girls. Now here's the tricky part. We see the number 3 right up here, so the, the go-to number would be, oh, there's the number 3. I'm going to divide 39 by 3. But the thing is, it's Michelle and her three friends. So we're going to divide this into four groups. So my number model with the unknown is 39 divided by 4 equals G, G for granola bar. So I need to set up that problem and solve 39 divided by 4. Now, off the top of my head, I know that 9 times 4 is 36. Okay? So I can just skip a couple steps and put the 9 up here at the top because 9 times 4 is 36. If I subtract the difference, that leaves me with 3. 3 extra granola bars. Now the question is, how many granola bars will each girl get? Okay? They're going to get 9 granola bars. Okay? Because the, the question is, how many will they get if they share them equally? Okay, if there's three left over, we can't divvy up those granola bars equally without cutting them into parts. So for our purposes here, our answer is nine, even though there's a remainder. Okay. Now we're going to look over here at number five, because problem number four looks just like number three, so we're going to skip over to a new type of problem. So this deals with ounces and pounds, and so the important part here is to know that there are 16 ounces for every pound. I'm going to write that right here, 16 OZ ounces equals one pound. Okay. So knowing that there are 16 ounces for every pound, I'm going to jump ahead to tell you how to solve uh, problem 5B. Explain how you figured out how many ounces were in 14 pounds. I multiplied... the number of pounds by 16 because 16 ounces equals one pound. So now I just have to multiply 14 times 16. Now, 14 times 16 is uh, two digit by two digit, so I'm going to use partitioning rectangles for this one. 16 is 10 and 6 ones, and 14 is 10 and 4 ones. So now I'm just going to multiply all the parts together. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 6 is 60. 10 times 4 is 40. 4 times 6 this is 24. So now that I have all my partial products, I can go ahead and take all four of those products, 100, 60, 40, and 24, line them up into a multiple add-end addition problem, and then add them all together. 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 2 more is 12, so I'm going to carry that 1. So my total is 224. So to answer the question, how many ounces are in 14 pounds? Well, it'd be the number of groups of 16 times 
uh, 14 pounds, so 224. Okay. Number six and seven ask you to find the missing angle measure without using a protractor. Okay. Now, if we know that a 90 degree angle equals the right angle and a 180 degree angle is our straight angle or a straight line this is really not a angle measurement problem so much as it is a fact family problem so fact families involve three numbers if I'm doing an addition subtraction fact family I need to know what are my three numbers involved. So for problem six, I have angle A, which I don't know the answer to. But I do know that uh, I have two of the numbers, one being 40 and the other being 90. 90 that square or right angle. So what I need to do is figure out what is my missing number right here? Well, I know that 4 plus 5 gives me 9. So if I have 4 tens and I add them to 5 tens, that's going to give me 9 tens. 40 plus 50 equals 90. So my missing number has to be 5 tens, otherwise known as 50. So if I know that a right angle is 90 degrees and I have one of the measurements, all I have to do is think about what plus 40 gives me 90. And the same will be true for number 7, except we need our sum total to be 180. So my uh, number uh, model with, um, with a, an unknown would look something like this. 1... 80 minus something in parentheses equals blank. Okay, we'll say A for angle. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to add what is 30 plus 90 to figure out what the number you're subtracting from 180 is, and then you will get uh, your missing angle, that angle uh, D, B, C. Let's look at the last page. This has some fractional problems and some measurement of some angles. Okay. Number eight, Joey added three and three-fourths cups of strawberries to the fruit salad. Then he added two and three-fourths cups of grapes to the fruit salad. How many cups of fruit did Joey add to the fruit salad? Again, this is a ruckus-style number problem, so I'm just going to think about reading it again, underlining the question, and then circling the important information. So I'm going to underline the question. That's the sentence with the question mark at the end. How many cups of fruit did Joey add? Oh boy, there's a giveaway. It just says add right there uh, to the fruit salad. So we need to create an addition problem. Now I'm going to write it side by side to start. And then I'm going to write it vertically to solve. So it's three. Oops, let's do that in a darker color. So it's going to be 3 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 3 fourths equals, we'll say, F for fruit salad. There's my number model with the unknown. Now I need to solve it. And to solve it, what you're going to want to do is write those same two fractional amounts, but you're going to write them vertically. 3 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 3 fourths. I'll do the first part of the addition, but then you're going to have to do a little bit more legwork to figure out the actual answer because 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is going to give me a total of 6 fourths. That's an improper fraction. Now I can have a mixed number which is a whole number 
in a fractional part, okay, and I can have an improper fraction like this, but what I can't have is a problem that is a whole number and an improper fraction. That is not a mixed number. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what would another way of saying six-fourths be and then add that to my five whole cups. Okay, So to solve for this problem, how many cups total were added to the fruit salad, I need to solve five plus another way of thinking about six-fourths cups. Okay, uh, Number nine has us measuring angles, and that would be something you have to use a protractor to do. Uh, so I'm going to ignore that one, uh, and we'll come back to it when we have time in class. And then the one thing that we have left to look at is this uh, perimeter and area problem. Okay, um, It's actually a division problem at first, so you have to find the length of one side to, to figure out the perimeter. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what information we have. Well, we know that the area of this long skinny rectangle is 294 square inches. We know that one side is 6 inches uh, wide. Now the formula for area is length times width equals area. So that means to find the answer of this problem we need to take this problem 6 inches and multiply it by something that gives us an area of 294 inches square. Another way we can think about this multiplication problem with the missing factor is reverse it into a division problem. 294 divided by 6. Okay, So to solve for the length of the rectangle, you have to divide 294 by 6. That's the first step. Then, to solve for perimeter, the perimeter problem is length plus length plus width plus width and when it comes to a rectangle. So if I already know that 6 is the width, my problem would look like this. Length plus length plus 6 plus 6. So what we need to find is the measure of the length. Okay. So once you determine the measure of the length in inches, you're going to then replace these two L's with those numbers, and then you'll be able to find the perimeter. And that, my friends, is an overview of our study guide. Now, there are some problems I skipped uh, that if you want to learn more about, you can attempt those problems at home, and if you still have questions, bring them back to class when the study guide is due and we will discuss them in length before you have to take the test. Again, if you have any further questions, have your parents please email me. Otherwise, we will talk later. Thanks.